A warm welcome to everyone. This video is about to introduce a new course. The name of the open IT course is an industrial measurement system. So my name is Gautam T, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Electronics and Instrumentation Engineering in Dr. Mahalingam College of Engineering and Technology. So this course I mainly focus on to measure the physical quantity in petroleum and refinery areas, steel industries, pulp industries, etc. Industrial measurement systems course focuses five course outcomes. Course outcome one summarize the types, static and dynamic characteristics of transducers. Course outcome two explain the principle of various types of special transducers. Course outcome three select a suitable pressure and temperature measuring instruments for given application. Course outcome four explain the different methods of measurement of load speed torque measuring instruments last one course outcome 5 select a suitable flow measuring instrument for the given application first unit is that is co1 transducers and characteristics in this these topics will be covered units and standards because whenever we want to indicate any quantity it may be a physical quantity chemical quantity or biological quantity we want to indicate with units then only we can identify what is the type of parameter it is measured through that instrument in addition to that different standards are available that is commonly accepted by all over the world by the industries that will be covered in this topic next one classification of errors in which different types of error occurred while measurement that will be covered then classification of transducers in which primary and secondary transducers active and passive transducers transducers and inverse transducers will be covered next one static and dynamic characteristics characteristics of transducers are very much important while measurement because with the help of the characteristics curve only we can improve the quality of measurement last one types of transducers so mainly resistive capacitive inductive transducers will be covered in this types of transducers co2 deals with special transducers in special transducers piezoelectric transducer strain cages hall effect transducer magnetoelastic load cells digital transducers particularly linear and rotary type encoders will be covered then fiber optic sensors nano sensors mems smart sensors these special transducers will be applicable for the measurement of physical quantities in industries that will be covered in co2 co3 deals with pressure and temperature measurement in industries so here the two portions are available the first portion deals with pressure measuring devices first one board on tubes and diaphragms with strain cages so board on tubes are mainly used for the pressure measurement with indication only <coughs> capacitive type pressure cages so mainly in most of the cases we are measuring the pressure using differential pressure transmitter in industries the base principle is capacitive type pressure cages next one for the low pressure measurement that is measurement of vacuum here we are including thermal conductivity cages that is pirani cage and ionization cages next portion deals with temperature measurement so mainly rtds and thermocouples are mostly used in industries for the temperature measurement here under rtd resistance thermometer we are using 3r and 4r rtd then for the temperature indication purpose maximum we are using bimetallic thermometers then for the high temperature measurement thermocouples are suitable so here different types of thermocouples and their characteristics how they are implemented in industries for the measurement along with thermo well is included in this topic then in non contact type temperature measurement optical pyrometers and fiber optic sensors will be covered in this portion co4 deals with liquid level measurement load and speed measurement the first portion is liquid level measurement so in which float cages 
and displace the type transducers for the liquid level measurement in open and closed tanks. Then DPT method, differential pressure transmitter, that is most of the cases for the liquid level measurement in industries, the DPT is used. With the help of DPTs, we can measure open tank as well as the closed tank level measurement. For example, in boiler drum level measurement, how the DPT is applied, that will be covered in this area. Next one, capacitive sensors. For the conducting and non-conducting liquids, this method is suitable. Last one, nucleonic cages, ultrasonic cages, radar measurement for the liquid level measurement. These are all non-contact type liquid level measurement which are all applicable in process industries. The second portion deals with angular velocity and torque measurement in shafts. So mainly, always whenever a rotating part is available, we want to measure the angular velocity as well as the torque developed in the shaft. Using optical and magnetic methods, we can measure angular velocity that is a speed as well as torque developed in the shaft. So these topics will be covered in this speed and torque measurement. Next one, stain cages. So mostly stain cages type transducers are used in industries for different parameter measurements like load, torque and acceleration. CO5 deals with flow measurement. So flow is the important quantity. So whenever we want to control the pressure, temperature, level in a tank, we want to regulate the flow rate value. So flow is the one of the important parameter that should be measured in industries. It may be any kind of industries. So in process industries, mainly orifice venturi flow nozzles are used for the measurement of water flow measurement, particularly liquid flow measurement. For this, expression for flow rate through rest restriction will be covered under RFI's venturi and flow nozzle. Next one, quantity flow meter. In quantity flow meter, that is used to measure what is the volume of liquid transmitted for the period of time. So remaining flow meters that indicates instantaneous value of flow rate, that is with respect to time, what is the flow. But in positive displacement flow meter, that indicates quantity that, that will be act as an integrator. Under this notating disc and oval gear flow meters will be covered. Next one, rotameter. So for indication purpose, in any kind of process industries, rotameters are installed to indicate the flow rate value. So these flow meters are deals with volumetric flow rate, some chemical e equation or it may be an energy transmission involves then in addition to the volumetric flow rate mass flow rate is important because if it is a incompressible fluid then there is no problem with volumetric flow measurement and mass flow measurement if it is a compressible fluid like steam or gas which deals with any chemical reaction or energy transmission then we want to compensate with temperature and pressure so for that a direct mass flow measurement is needed so under which mass flow meters, thermal and Coriolis type mass flow meters are included. Last one, electromagnetic flow meter and ultrasonic flow meter. So here, electromagnetic flow meters and ultrasonic flow meters are suitable for different kinds of fluids as well as different size of pipelines because of their characteristics. So because Electromagnetic flow meter and ultrasonic flow meters are mostly non-contactive flow meters which will measure the flow rate value accurately with higher and lower flow profiles. So these five units will cover the major portions of industrial measurement systems. In addition to that, remaining parameters are also available, but in this course, we mainly focus on which are all the important parameters and instruments to be measured in industries with the help of an instruments. For this, here two textbooks and three reference books are available for your reference. So These are all for your reference. In addition to that, different standard books are available for the measurement system. If you have any clarification or doubts, please feel free me to contact. Thank you.